Hello, welcome to On Charge, bringing you behind the scenes at the Envision Virgin Racing Team, and we are honoured, truly blessed today, to have with us Robin Freintz, the Envision Virgin Racing Driver. Uh, let's little, have a little reflect on Season 6, first of all, because what, what were your overall feelings off of Season 6? Because you went into sort of the end of Season 5, maybe in the sort of championship fight, it was a bit of a long shot, but you know, Season 6 was a bit of a different year. Um, yeah, we ended season five on a high with the win in New York. Uh, I think we definitely had good pace in, in the car in season five in general. Then season six, you have quite some high expectations uh, going into Riyadh. And I think the first race went pretty well, finishing fifth. Um, and then, yeah, basically from there on, from race two onwards, it started to be difficult. Uh, I had a lot of, um, yeah, DNFs on my name, uh, some issues as well, some unlucky moments, issues with the car and so forth. So I had quite a long streak of zero points. So you gradually see, yeah, I wouldn't say the championship going away from you, but just the general season, uh, which is obviously not easy. Um, but then when you came to Berlin, the first race, uh, I crashed again with, uh, I think, a lap five or something with, with Gunther. And from that moment on, everything went pretty smooth. And I was always fighting in a, in a well, top five, I would say. So again, it shows that the speed is there to be up front. It's very difficult to be up front in formerly all the races. Um, so if you are consistent throughout the season and you're always finishing top five-ish, then for sure the end of the season, you're there. Are you a, do you think you are a consistent driver or are, is, is that what you want to be or is that something you have to learn to be because you seem to me to be quite a I just want to win or you know that's the most important thing have you had to sort of change that that mindset um obviously if if I see a gap for the victory if I'm P2 I will take it 100% but sometimes uh, I had this uh, in Berlin basically when I was running behind Gunther and I had more energy and I was like one or two laps to go and it was just too tricky to have a go at him because he was defending quite well. So I think, yeah, you do everything for the win, but you need to take it smart sometimes and secure the P2 or P3 because there's other opportunities coming along, hopefully. What changed before Berlin? Was there a single thing that put you kind of back on track or were you, were you, were you kind of surprised? Were you going into Berlin thinking it was going to be OK and then it was better than you expected? Um... Nothing really changed. We just, yeah, I wouldn't, if, if it was just unlucky or, or just always in the wrong position, like, you know, the, the issues we had in Mexico when I was running uh, P4 straight out uh, behind Buemi and I got T-boned by Nick because he had an issue uh, which he couldn't do anything about. But I'm the guy who T-bones, who got T-boned. So it's all those strange things and punctures in lap one in Santiago, which puts me a lap down and it just doesn't really help. Uh, and as long as if the speed is there, because you're going into the next weekend starting fresh, and FP2, FP2, uh, FP1, FP2, you're always like top five, so you have the speed to, to be competitive for, for podiums. So that's why you kind of don't really lo lose the hope uh, throughout the season, which I didn't do. But then Berlin, it's not really, it was never really my favorite track. Uh, I was never really so competitive in it. But yeah, finishing twice P2, I would uh, definitely take that one. And also yeah, throughout two weekends, because we had three weekends basically, uh, we were quite competitive. And I expected to be in the top five, uh, but I didn't expect to, to fight for victories twice. And so looking ahead to season seven, how are you feeling going into, you know, every, everyone you ask will say, oh, you know, Optimistic, hope we can be at the front, but obviously there's 24 cars. It's going to be, it's going to be difficult. Well, how are you? How are you reflecting on that? And how does the amount of testing you get affect your your confidence? Uh, the thing is, with Formula E, it, the world never really sits still. I uh, always kind of compare to Formula One in the ways where you clearly see the difference in the cars with the little wings you ha they have all the time. But in Formula E, it's all all happening underneath with the software. Uh, so there are some, some big changes for next year on software-wise. And we didn't drove the car, we didn't test the car yet. 
so going into Valencia, there's for us a lot to learn of how uh, some new systems or, or basically the car works. Um, so is it a disadvantage? I would say now, I would say yes. Um, but after Valencia, hopefully we learn enough to be competitive. But how I'm going to look into the season? Yeah, I mean, everybody starts from scratch. Uh, the Cheetah showed for the last few years that they've been very strong. So for sure they will be there. Um, Mercedes saw really good potential in Berlin, uh, finishing 1-2. So I think the longer formally continues, the more people are learning, uh, like teams who have been struggling in the past, they learn obviously way more than people who are winning, which is logic. So the field is coming much closer together. So if you go to street tracks like Santiago or Rome or whatever, I think the driver makes more of a difference now to, to qualifying up front or qualifying not in the top 10. I think it's going to be fighting for a few tenths rather than finding a half a second somewhere. Are there any races that stand out for you that you're really hoping come back and, and, that, and that happen? Because obviously we don't really know what's going to happen. Um, well, definitely street tracks. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Berlin is like, I don't know, a steamy street track. Yeah. It's built up. Um, for sure, the races in Europe, Paris, Rome, I really enjoyed. Uh, really feel comfortable with those tracks as well. Um, Riyadh is it's a very challenging track with, you know, being kind of in the desert, only one line to drive on and very itchy as well. Um, but I like tracks where if you, if you take Paris or if you take the second sector from Riyadh, mm. where it just keeps on going like you know, a fluent movement of corners, that's what I enjoy most of it. And not like really those boring 90 degrees corners and break on power again, you know. It needs to be kind of a challenge. And definitely Paris has one of those. Um, Rome is more 90 degrees, but it's, it goes up and down quite a lot. So that's really nice. But yeah, other tracks. Hopefully Eindhoven comes along soon. Yeah. What, do, do you think it will? I hope so. I mean, I've um, been speaking to the guy who's trying to organize it. Um, and they are really, yeah, working out to, to get on the cal calendar for, I mean, not for season seven or eight, but season nine, ten or ish. It's quite far away, obviously, but... Will you still be in Formula E? Because you'd be quite old by then. You're nearly <sighs> 30. Man. Thanks for that. <laughs> no, is it I, weird not being the young kind of kid anymore? Like in the team, you're the you're the older guy now in the team. With how Nick old is joining. Nick? He's younger than you, isn't he? He's like 25. I want to no, say. No, he's older than that, isn't he? 26. 26. 26. Mate, he looks 30. <laughs> 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 no, I don't feel old at all. Maybe because I'm not so tall. <laughs> I'm still smallish. Yeah. He's bigger than me. Is he? Yeah, he's, he's a bit taller than me. Oh, okay. So, but no, I, I don't feel old. Um, but well, we'll see in season nine. <laughs> and uh, Formula is going to be a world championship as well next year. Is that cool? Does that affect you? It doesn't affect me. I do Formula E. It's, it's nice to drive on the street tracks. If it's a world championship or... Obviously, you go into the championship, you want to win the championship. So if it's a world, a European or, or whatever championship it is, you want to defeat the other guys. Obviously, it's always nice to say, like, I'm world champion. But at the end of the day, we drive the same races that we did in season one. So for me, nothing really changed. And how is your relationship with Nick? Do you like Fine. him? Fine, yeah, he's a good guy. Uh, we drove together in, uh, in the last race of DTM last year. Oh, okay. When the Japanese teams came over for Hockenheim, so I saw him there basically. Um, yeah, he's like very relaxing, kind of Kiwi guy. So uh, yeah, good chap to hang out with. Yeah, you fit in quite. You both are you both just really relaxed then? Yeah, we are quite relaxed. Um, yeah, I think so far I don't see an issue. I mean, he showed his potential in Marrakesh in the rookie test where he was quickest by quite a margin, I think it mm. was. So I don't underestimate him at all. As a teammate, you want to be always competitive, but as a team generally, you always want two cars in front and not one. 
so I think we we're helping each other. Uh, obviously, he has a lot to learn in Formula E. It's a different world. So um, I try to, yeah, give as much information as as I that that what he needs to to be competitive in Santiago. Because I also want to see him um, finishing up front if I have a technical issue or, or if I'm just not quick enough in that weekend. I feel like you've gotten on with all of your teammates quite well. Yeah. Am I forgetting? Like, do you, do you often? have trouble with teammates or never? I often have issues with teammates. Oh, you think? Yeah, yeah. I, well, not in Formula E. Like, it's in Formula E, it's been very... Yeah, so you yeah. and Sam were good, you and Antonio, you and Simona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were great. Yeah, for me, um, I'm always very straightforward, always yeah. honest. And even some guys, like the team which I'm driving with for the Audi, they, they, they always came back to me like, sometimes you're brutally honest. So it, it's true and I cannot really take it when, when a teammate uh, is just not honest and, and tries to take something around your back, you know, and, and try to defeat you or whatever. Uh, for me, I see in the series we are, we are in, in the motorsport world, it's a very competitive world. And I like it in a way, but I like it fair. So if I, I have this with, with uh, Nico and DTM as well, that we just throw everything on the table um, and whoever is quickest is quickest. Like it's kind of like respect, you know? Mm. There's nothing we are hiding and I think it will be the same with Nick. And I kind of, I wouldn't say I like it or I enjoy it, but if someone is quicker than me as, as a teammate, and I know it's fair, I don't have any issues with that. I just like from, yeah, he did a good job. Um, I just need to improve myself. And nothing well like, like not saying anything or not speaking, and I just don't enjoy, it, enjoy that in the team. Too old for that. Yeah, too old, too that, old right? and life is too short for that. You know, it's just, I just get on with it. Okay, so season seven, what do you go in with expectation-wise? Do you think, right, we win a couple of races, see what happens? Do you think we've got to be aiming for the championship? Is it a case of you just have to focus on beating Audi because they're your only kind of, you know, they're running the same powertrain, you're an Audi customer. Is that the main focus or is it impossible to set targets? Informally, it's impossible to set targets, that's clear. Um, especially with the qualifying format, which we still have, you know, if you're doing a good job, you get punished for it in Group 1. Especially if you go to tracks where street tracks like Rome or whatever, where Group One has always been been slow. Um, but it would be stupid to say like we see what happens. In a way, if we finish fifth, we are happy. I mean, we are going into the season, try to win it, and like everybody else, I think we definitely have the team and and the support from from Audi to be competitive, which we've shown for the last two years. Uh, we won a couple of races last two years, so I don't know why we cannot fight for the championship. Uh, we just, yeah, need a bit of luck on our side a bit more often, I would say. And on bad days, if we are scoring a P5 or a P6, I think if that's a maximum, that's a maximum. We should be happy with that and focus on the next race to try to be on the podium again. When you join, a t when you're about to join with a teammate, do you instantly know if you're going to get on or not get on? You know, is it easy to tell the first time you meet a guy and you're like, oh, this let's is say be after bad, the, or... the the first uh, first date, yeah, let's say, you kind of know how a person is. Yeah, I think I, I, I if you're talking to to another person, you know how he is a bit in his private life as well, mm -hmm. and. Yeah, you know, and you also, you also know as, it, as in this world what the guy did in the past, what he achieved or what happened with his racing career in general. So I think we all know that Nick has been very competitive in Japan and he won Nippon and, and the GT championship there. So I don't expect that he will be, will be off uh, throughout the season, maybe the beginning, obviously, which is normal. But then I think he will be very competitive. But... Yeah, I think some, some guys would be, which I know, would be va quite difficult to, to have as a teammate because no one wants to be beaten as a teammate, um, but it depends how you take it. 
and some will not take it very well, and then you will have struggles. <laughs> Wise words. Well, Robin, thank you very much for joining us. Fascinating chat here on On Charge, and uh, we'll see you next time for more content from Envision Virgin Racing. <laughs>